and we're live. Welcome everybody, welcome ladies and gentlemen to Advent of Code 2022 Day 17. So I mean the past couple of days have been a bit tough so I'm hoping today is not too bad. Um, hopefully it's a bit of a cool down from yesterday and the day before. Um, I hope so. Although it is the weekend and Eric is notorious for giving us hard problems on the weekend. Um, I don't know. I guess we'll see. So I'll dive straight into it and I'll see you guys after the time lapse. Okay, um, that's part one done. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Thankfully, it was a much easier problem than previous days. Um, yeah, I quite like that one. A lot to think about. But anyway, um, I'll copy my files over and I'll move on to part two. So I'll see you after the time lapse.
Okay. Um, yeah. Second goal start done. I mean, that was pretty intense, yeah. Um, lots of math for that part too. Made a couple of errors there though. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. That was a good day. Um, so let's go to the question. Day 17, Pyroclastic Flow. Your handheld device is located an alternative exit from the cave for you and the elephants. The grind is rumbling almost continuously now, but the strange valves bought you some time. It's definitely getting warmer in here though. The tunnels eventually open into a very tall narrow chamber. Large, oddly shaped rocks are falling into the chamber from above, presumably due to all the rumbling. If you can't work out where the rocks will fall next, you might be crushed. The five types of rocks have the following peculiar shapes, where that's the rock and that is the space. These are the shapes. The rocks fall in the order shown above. First, that shape, then then second one, then this one, etc. Once the end of the list is reached, the same order repeats. The rocks don't spin, but they do get pushed around by jets of hot gas coming out of the walls themselves. A quick scan reveals the effect of jets of hot gas will have on the rocks as they fall. Your puzzle input. For example, suppose this was the jet pattern in your cave. Um, in jet patterns, this symbol means a push to the left, whilst this symbol means a push to the right. The pattern above means that the jets will push a falling rock right, then right, then right, then left, then left, then left, then right, sorry, and so on. If the end of the list is reached, it repeats. The tall vertical chamber is exactly 7 units wide, how convenient. A very tall as well. Each rock appears so that its left edge is 2 units away from the left wall, and its bottom edge is 3 units above the highest rock in the bottom, or the floor if there isn't one. After a rock appears, it alternates between being pushed by a jet of hot gas in one unit in the direction indicated by the next symbol in the jet pattern, and then falling the one unit down. If any movement would cause any part of the rock to move into the wall's floor or stopped rock, the movement instead does not occur. If a downward movement would have caused a falling rock to move into the floor or an already fallen rock, the falling rock stops where it is, having landed on something, and a new rock immediately begins falling. Drawing falling rocks with at and uh, blah blah, this example. More examples, very long examples. To prove to the elephants, um, your simulation is accurate. They want to know how tall the tower will get after 2222 rocks have stopped, but before the 2023rd rock has stopped falling. Um, in this example, the tower of rocks will be this many tall. So the question is, how many units tall will the tower of rocks be after 2022 rocks have stopped falling? Right, so I kind of just read this. Then after I read, read after I read the rest, it's quite obviously a game of Tetris. <laughs> Yay! Don't we love playing Tet cutting our own Tetris games? Um, yeah. I mean, I kind of just read all of it to be honest, and just flick back to the example a couple of times, just to, like fully understand the rules. Cause they're a bit confusing, but really wasn't too bad to understand. Um, yeah, just kept flicking between the example and like this text. I think like these these two bits were like the key bits um, because these are the two bits which can kind of just like convert into code, or these are two bits that really dictate how your code's going to work. Um, so speaking of my code, I have extra files here, um, let me just chuck this away, um, I think desktop 2 should be empty, okay that's empty enough, um, bear with me, right so let's check out my code, that'll be day 17, right, um, I'm probably gonna have to zoom in a bit more, right so the first step was my inputs, I mean I had to write strip it this time because um, it is just on one line. Um, it's a one line input. And obviously at the end of every line in a file, when Python reads it, there's going to be some sort of white space character, like an enter or something, or a tab key. So I just did that by using rstrip. Um, and then this, this bit is essentially, you know, I mean, th this is just this bit coded. It's like the five shapes coded into coordinates, the relative coordinates. Um, and just to choose for me what would be the relative coordinates, x equals 0 would be the leftmost, um, so like this would be x equals 0, this would be x equals 0, so on. Um, and then y equals 0 would be the bottommost, so like this this row would be y equals 0, this row would be y equals 0, and so on. And from there I'd use those relative coordinates and just I just hard-coded in um, these five different shapes. The reason I chose it like that is because later on it said um, your, thing sh your thing should be, the leftmost edge of your shape should be two away from the left. And therefore it's just easier if I hard code everything relative to the left edge of this shape. And similar idea for the bottom, because everything is relative to the bottom edge um, and the left edge. To use that, to use those two edges as my relative edges for the two axes, it just made the rest a bit easier. Anyway, so I won't talk through all of this code because it's quite a lot. Um, but V is essentially the set um, of 
every occupied cell again. So it just it's just a it just wherever there's a rock is going to be chucked in the the coordinates. Um, and then this is simulating adding a rock. And so it's in a massive for loop. Um, yeah, lots of modular arithmetic here, here just to select the right shape because obviously it repeats once you get to the end. Um, and then once I find the right the relative coordinates of the right shape, so once I've extracted one of these sets, for example, um, one of those tuples, I'm then going to add all of those coordinates to just a new list, and I'm going to adjust them relative to where they start off. So from the left, they always start off two away from the wall, and from the bottom, they're going to start off four above um, the highest y coordinate. Uh, that's what that is. And then here, I'm just simulating like actually like moving and dropping the block. Um, I mean, there's a lot to do here. Um, so this bit's like left and right motion. Um, yeah, so I do the motion on these two lines. Then I'm like, oh, if I if that motion actually made me turn into a wall, like the left or right wall, or if it made me turn into, um, like, if it made me go into another rock, or I guess the floor too, right, that's not gonna happen. But if I if the gusts forced me to t to like be in the rock or be in another wall or something like that, um. Then I just set c equals to one, and that's just an indicator for this point, where I then undo the action above. I undo the movement because the movement's invalid. And again, I'm basically just hard coding, like converting this text to code. It says here, um, if any movement would cause any um, part of the rock to move into the wall's floor or stop the rock, the movement instead does not occur. So initially, I'm just converting the question into code. So I just reverse the movement there. Um, one thing to note here, I'm pretty sure this is a logic error. <laughs> did seem to matter though, which is nice. Um, and I checked, I basically checked if any of the xy coordinates is... So what, what, what these two numbers do, it checks, this is meant to check the y, the x coordinate, sorry. So the x coordinate is minus one, then you're in the wall. The x coordinate is seven, then you're also in the right wall. Um, but what this does, is doesn't just check the x coordinate, it checks the y coordinate as well, which is the issue. I mean, I only noticed that in part two, <laughs> but it didn't actually make a difference to my part one answer, thank god. But yeah, that was a logic error. Um, anyway, then this this second half of the while loop, this simulates moving downwards. Similar idea here, moving downwards. But then I'm checking if that turned me, if that forced me to go into a rock. And if it did force me to go into a rock, then I'm going to undo my movement and I'm going to break. Because at that point, you know you're settling down. Again, it says here, um, and you knew you're, it's like it says right here. Um, and yeah, I think this is like one of the best things about ASC because. Some of the questions you can just straight up convert <laughs> into code. Or at least part of the code is literally just question converted. And the question provides so much clarity if you have it side by side like I do. Just keep flicking back. Um, and it's kind of like live code the question. Right, so at that point, I then have to update the maximum y um, value. Because obviously, like firstly, the answer we want is the maximum y value. And um, the, the second reason I need to do that is because the next rock will fall relative to the maximum y value up here. Um, and then finally, last thing I do is I just add the coordinates of this now settled rock onto the, the coordinate set. And then I just print out the answer. Yeah, that's the thing, that's pretty fast code. Um, how fast was it? Um, stop pi. Yeah, I mean, pretty much instant. Um, I'll show you up here. Yeah, pretty much instant. Um, yeah, so let's move on to Part two, the elephants are not impressed by your simulation. These elephants, man, are so demanding. Oh yeah, they demand to know how tall the tower will be after. I actually don't even know what this is. Like I was gonna do this on my calculator, um, but I didn't think I wanted to count how many zeros there were here. So I just did all, yeah. So how many zeros is this one? That's three, six, nine. Um, that's gonna be like a trillion, I think. Yeah, that's, that's a trillion. After, uh, they demand to know how tall the tower will be after a trillion rocks have stopped. Only then will they feel confident enough to proceed through the cave. <laughs> how tall will the tower be after a trillion rocks have stopped? Yeah. So I mean, I could just write the entire thing first off because it's like <laughs> two sentences. Um, for example. And I mean, with this question, Eric always has at least one or two of these every year, where you have a simulation like this one, and then part two is going to be okay. Now simulate it on a massive number, and every single time the trick is the same trick. Um, and it's the idea that at some point you're going to have a repeating cycle. So um, at some point along this massive sequence, you're going to enter a point where the cycle repeats itself. 
and then all you have to do is find where it starts to repeat itself and where it ends repeating itself. And then you just have to calculate how many of those repeats are in the entire code. Um, so for example, let's say my let's say my thing over here, instead of being a trillion, let's say it was 10. Then let's say there's a cycle of two long, a repeating cycle of two. Let's say that cycle of two starts at um, like on the fifth on the fifth turn. So the fifth and sixth turn will essentially have the same effect as the seventh and eighth, which have the same effect as the ninth and tenth. Because at some point your code will reach a point, or your simulation will reach a point, where from then on it, it's just a repeated pattern of cycles you've already seen. Because ultimately your entire piece of code, there's, there's just one cycle, like one pattern in the entire thing. It might be like a thousand long, but it's a pattern nevertheless. And then it's a pattern that's repeated constantly throughout the code. Um, you just do the pattern, you repeat the pattern like that. Um, and so we basically just want to calculate how many of those patterns occur. And then we also want to calculate how much of a Y value those pat each of the patterns give. And so if you calculate those two values, you can multiply them together because you're saying there are this many values, there are this, this, this many patterns, and each pattern increases the Y corner by this much. Um, and if you multiply them together, you get your max Y coordinate. And that would basically be enough, but there's nothing to say that you're going to start at the start of a pattern. Right? It's like you may, your simulation may start like halfway through a pattern. Um, and then the pattern will restart and then recycle across. So, what you have to do, therefore, is identify the pattern, identify the first full instance of the pattern. Um, and for me, that happened from, I think it was, um, it was like, it was like rock 140 before a full cycle began again. Um, and then from that point onwards, you can just say, okay, from rock 140, how many more full cycles go up until 1 trillion? So to do that, yeah, I mean, with this, you probably just saw me use, um, um, let me get it. You probably saw me use just the, the terminal, the, the, the math, the Python, um, like shell. I just used Python shell to do the math for me. Um, yeah, so cycle rock 140 was where I first encountered a cycle. So what I'm essentially saying is, okay, at this point, I have that many rocks, that many more rocks to drop. But what I do know is that there's a cycle repeating every 1,735 rocks. So every 1,735 rocks, it's just the same cycle. So what I then do is I find out, okay, how many of these cycles fit in? I mean, you could kind of ignore this. Um, I mean, this was pretty necessary, but I'm not going to talk through it. I'll just go through the overall idea, um, which is. How many of these cycles now fit in? Um, and the answer is that many cycles. Right, so I've got that many cycles. Each cycle is worth, as I calculated in my code, each cycle is worth this value. So if I multiply those two values together, I'm now going to get the total value when all of the cycles have been run. So now I've got this number, but now the issue is um, I also need to account for um, the first 140 rocks because I started accounting from 140 rocks. Um, that's because that's a full cycle repeated from then onwards. But I need to account for the first chunk, like the first half cycle, first quarter cycle, whatever it was. I need to account for that. So I just run the simulation on 140 rocks. Um, and then I realized that I think it was, uh, how much was it? <laughs> it was 204. So there were 200, the Y height was 204 after 140 rocks. And then that's what that's, that's where I start with, and then I just repeat the cycle a load of times, and this is just the calculated number um, from here. So I mean, if you put that together, um, the answer, like what you'd have to do, is you'd say, okay, from at the point from when I start repeating my full cycles, which is 140, what's the what's the y height? The answer in this case was 204. Okay, um, and now of the remaining rocks, which was this value, of the remaining rocks, um, so I mean, I guess I'll just write this out in full, just to make it, just make like a general formula, I guess. Actually, no, I wouldn't bother doing that. Okay, so that many cycles I now have to left to account for, but how many times does each cycle occur? So, that so I have to drop that many more rocks. So how many times does each cycle occur? Um, so you're just gonna figure out. Um, let's see, that was each cycle. So. At that point, now you have how many 
times the attack will occur, and then you just want to multiply the number of y coordinates that increases for every cycle. And the answer to that was two six seven three. And this would be my equation, right? Because this is how much I start with, and then this is the calculation for how much all of the cycles combined are going to add together. And I mean, one thing to note um, is that, uh, well, first off, there are two things to note. <laughs> first off, what was I going to say? Yeah, I need to check this here. So what I'm checking is, okay, so is this remaining number, does it now have a full number of cycles going into it? Um, yes, it does. So I could kind of simplify the rest of the process. But if it didn't have a full number of cycles going into it, you'd have to recalculate how many cycles go on it afterwards. Because essentially what your program is doing, so that's what the simulation is doing, there is a set amount of cycles. So let's just let's like round up to 2,000. So every 2,000 rocks, there's a repeating cycle. And so you're going to have these chunks of 2,000. But right at the beginning, you may start halfway, halfway through a cycle. So you need to calculate that beginning bit. Then you calculate all of these chunks of repeated chunks of cycles. But then right at the end, you may also have an incomplete cycle. You may only have a cycle that's a quarter way through. Um, so then you calculate that quarter, you calculate the last bit, the first bit, and everything in between. And you add all three together. So that's what I'm doing here. This is the first bit, which I just simulated. This is the second bit, which you have to do with mass, because it's like the bulk of the the bulk of the repeats, the bulk of the rock. And then the final bit, in this case, Eric was nice. Um, there was no final bit, because there were a full number of cycles. Um, but if there was a final bit, you just have to simulate that as well. Um, which would take a few more minutes, but yeah. That was the code. I'm sorry, that was the, that was the maths. <laughs> um, and I mean, one thing I noticed, this answer was actually wrong. So I just quickly ran the same process on the example answer, example input, and I actually got like this answer, which is the correct answer for the example, was one lower than the answer I got. So I made the assumption that, oh, then mine's just gonna be one lower. I realized in retrospect, <laughs> that's not a good assumption to make. Um, but I mean, it was good enough, and I, I feel like that's probably the same for most people, to be honest. I feel like Eric was a bit nicer, but I'm pretty sure, mathematically speaking, that's not a correct assumption. Um, there's probably some reason to this. I'll probably like look at this a bit later, but I'm pretty sure the reason that you can't assume is going to be one less than like this this expression. Um, as you can see here, like my answer was one less than this expression. The reason you can't assume that, I think, is because Hmm. Yeah, I don't. I don't actually know to be honest. I think. I think I just messed. I I probably had an off by one error somewhere, right? Um, so one of these is probably an off by one error. Probably like this, I reckon, because I'm checking. Ah, oh, yeah. I really don't know. I don't really want to explain it because I feel like I may be wrong. <laughs> um, but I definitely have some off one off by one error somewhere in my maths. Um. And just by luck, that off by one error happened to propagate to the actual answer, um, as opposed to like being amplified by like a magnitude of five, and therefore being an off by five error. Um, I don't know. I think I got lucky there. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was the math bit. Exit that, and let's see what my code actually was. I mean, my code's a bit like janky, just because I was just trying to find all of these like three, four different values that I was meant to find. So that's what like all of this extra stuff does. So you, at the start, at the time last, you probably saw me trying to think of this state. So to find a repeating cycle, and this is probably like the key bit you want to know. To find a repeating cycle, you need to keep track of every state. Um, and then every time you, and then once you keep track of every state, the next time you see the same state, you just completed a full cycle. From the first time you saw a state to the second time you saw a state, that's a cycle. Um, and so what a state should store is basically every bit of information it can. So what I'm storing is I'm storing the um, the wind gust index I was just on. I'm also storing the um, the shape I was just on. Obviously adjusting these because I mean these are bound to be different as I increases. Like this is never going to be the same. But in reality, you only want it to. So I, I is basically the rock number, right? So for every rock, like I would just increase by one. Um, so therefore, like this entire state would never be seen again. Um, so what you, are, what you actually want to keep track of is where in that list, or where in that string are you? That's what, that's what these two keep track of. Um, and then this, this is basically, oh, I don't know, <laughs> I'm quite lucky this worked. I guess it makes sense though. Um, it basically keeps track of the maximum y-coordinate 
of each x coordinate. So for each of these seven columns, you keep track of what is the y coordinate of the highest position. And then to normalize it, because you have to normalize them. If you're comparing things, you have to normalize them. Because over time they're bound to change, but you're meant to find a pattern. And a pattern can only be found by like normalizing things. So like the pattern this would store it would be, what's the maximum thing stored here? That'd be zero. And then this would be like normalized down to zero. And then you get in this column, what's the maximum Y thing is going to be this one. Then the next one is going to be this, then this, then this, then this, and then this. And they're all going to be normalized to the lowest one, which means that they're all relative to each other, um, which is what we want. Because if they were absolute, I mean, this, this tower keeps going up and up, right? So you're never going to see a repeating state at the absolute. So you, you have to like make them relative. Um, that's what I do here. Again, I'm not going to go too deep into this code. I think I think more, but it's more about the idea. Once you get how the maths works, I think it's better for you to guys have to have, to have a go at it. Um, and I mean, if you know how the maths works already, then I guess understanding my code shouldn't be too bad. Apart from the variable names, it shouldn't be too bad. Um, but yeah, all of these points are really just me trying to find repeated states, trying to check um, check different things, find all the values that I needed to find my correct answer. And eventually I did. So yeah, I'm going to keep that there. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think that was that was a really nice day. I love that day. Um, cause another simulation, like I really like the simulations. They're rare, but the good thing about simulations is that you never really like. It's not about learning an algorithm. It's not about seeing this thing before. It's more about logic and speed and implementation. And I like those because also like even if you have pre-written functions, that they're not going to do a whole lot in this case at least. Um, and so it really like. It's much more of a test of your skill as opposed to things like preparation, um, which I quite like. But it's also, it's like, I don't feel like lost, for example. <laughs> um, but I, I quite like it because it really forces you to think for yourself like, a lot. You have to really think. I mean, part two, two months it wasn't too fun just because <laughs> he lost this every year. But I mean, it was, it was good practice again, um, really intense. Because I, I knew exactly what to do, it was just a matter of doing it. <laughs> um, which took a bit longer than I wanted, but I don't know. I guess we'll see how it compares to in my school but yeah i really like that day and i've got 34 stars 68 percent the way through i went to code yeah and um this volcano is growing a little <laughs> um yeah we're so close to the end so close to christmas but yeah racking up these stars check out the stats first yeah i mean yesterday was still clearly a kill day for a lot of people fair enough yesterday was really tough um, yeah, come on, day seven, these are the two kill days, still there. Uh, but yeah, at least today is racking up a good amount of people so far. Although I feel like yesterday would have put people off, <laughs> which is not good. But anyway, 24 minutes. Wow. 10 minutes, yeah, I mean, I mean, these guys were fast, to be fair. But like, 24 minutes. Come on. <laughs> I can't be that slow. I feel like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, for part two, 15 and 40. Yeah. I think, I feel like for the days where it's less just knowing algorithms and more just implementation, people are generally slower. And that's fine, I guess, because people don't have pre-written functions or like things to just spew out from their brain, um, which is fair enough. So yeah, these are good times though. Pretty fast. 40 minutes, mm, gets a bit slow to the end, but yeah, these are fast. Let's check out the school leaderboard. Oh, so today another kill day for our school. Yeah, I feel like yesterday would have put people off or something, I don't know. Um, but yeah, how many people do you have who have done all of them? It's going to be like 8, I reckon? 8, no, 7. Yeah. Ooh, Aiden did win today. Um, have enough, good job to him. Um, yeah, good times. Ooh, it's tight. Oh, Danish for 32 minutes. Yeah, this, this is good. Anyway, that was today. That was day 17 of AOC 2022. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you managed to do at least part one. Hopefully you did part two. If not, hopefully you learned how to do part two. You can get away and do it now. Um, but yeah, I guess thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. As always, check out my code in the description down below. It's a GitHub link. Um, and yeah, bye. I'll see you tomorrow for day 18.